support will they pay is what we're talking about today in the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, joined by Helen Baker from On Your Own Two Feet. Hello. A resident expert financial planner, Shannon Dakin. Hi there. Now you're an accredited family law specialist. Yes. I'm getting good at that from Dakin Family Law. Okay, so on behalf of the ladies here, let me say this is general information only and you should seek specialist advice about your situation if you're in the process of divorce, obviously. Now, got that out of the way quite nicely well that done. time, ladies. <laughs> Third time lucky. Now, uh, child support. Let's talk about child support because that's a can of worms. We're going to have trouble fitting this into 10 minutes even. Let's, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Child support, how much do people expect to pay? That's, yeah. that's just a minefield, isn't oh, it? Oh, look, and it's, it's one of the big questions people have when they come and get advice at the first mm -hmm. stage. So there's a range of ways that you can provide for the financial needs of your children. So you can do it informally and privately just mm. with the other parent mm. and work out what you guys need and what the children you know need and all of those sorts of things and that can be recorded into a, a legally binding document if you wish. Uh, that seems like such a rare thing from the anecdotes of what you hear on the street they Shannon? Uh, no, <laughs> I think by and large um, oh. there's a lot of people that like to have a simultaneous settlement of all matters so they settle their property settlement, maybe their spousal maintenance and also child support and p potentially parenting at the same time. It can all be done at once. So it actually is, you know, relatively common for people yes. to, get, to get it together? Absolutely. Oh, what a relief. Okay. <laughs> now that's it. Now, Helen, how do you play a role in this process? Well, I like the, the other one that Shannon probably was going to talk about as well is that you can go to the actual website and it, there'll be a calculator. But I'm kind of in the same camp where I think when we look at actually what do they need, so again, I always talk to clients about what can you control because... The child support calculation is based on the other party working or you know earning whatever they earn. So if anything changes, your child support amount is likely to change mm -hmm. based on if it's on that calculator. So you have no control over that again. So if we go back to the bit of actually measuring out what do children need, how much do you need, you know, is there school fees involved? Is there a smarter way to do that mm -hmm. than leaving it left to a calculator? Yeah, because what, what Helen's essentially referring to is uh, making an assessment for child support through the Department of Human Services, mm -hmm. Child Support Agency, where they'll give you an assessment based on a number of factors and you know complex calculations which can change over time. Uh, and there's only relatively limited ways that that can be increased. So when you sit down with your financial planner and your lawyer and say, well, my needs are for the children, the children's needs are beyond that, uh, that's when you can start a conversation about what other ways there might be. Um, to provide for the children. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that's something they're going to Google and find this calculator for a start. And I guess there's probably in this day and age, we assume that when you go in to buy a car, they've already done the research. And right. You actually find in both your professions that people are coming in a bit better informed than maybe they traditionally did? Or is it a can of worms? You're pulling faces, the both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that um, when I see a lot of people there, they're busy navigating the emotional mm. side of an impact of separation. But mm -hmm. There are people that come in knowing exactly what they want, um, having already done a bit of their own research. Um, but more so, the, the thing that can save their costs is sitting down across the table just like this with their with their ex and mm. saying, what are we going to do? Great. Mm. Bang, bang, bang. Mm. And then going to the lawyers to draw it up. It's, in my experience, by far the most cost effective way to do it. Yeah, okay. And so, that, and that's what you advice, because we, we talked off camera about there being a process around family law and divorce, mm -hmm. settlements and that sort of thing. So, and if you, once you're in that process, you, you basically got to navigate that, that one way track, yeah? That's mm. right. If you end up in court, yes. You know, you're in a system, you give away control and it can be very expensive and very emotionally draining. Mm. Yeah. And I think if you go back to the key bits of, like obviously there's been an issue which is why you're actually getting divorced or separated, but if you go back to the key things that you agreed mm. around what do we want for our children and coming back to the things like private school and acting in the best interest of the children as opposed to, you know, that... Um, that's where I think people need to be mature enough to come back. And I don't. And one of the things I talk about in the new book is um, not where one party takes it over because that's what they promise the children mm. at their own financial expense. That's actually not good because they need to plan for their own financial future. So I think it's really important that that gets agreed in that settlement process together that these are the commitments we're making and these are the responsibilities that we're going to continue to share in the best interests of our children. Yeah, okay. Well, particularly in the in the situation where there are children, then obviously it's really important they keep focused on that. I hear that across the industry. Is that right. there's, there's sometimes the emotion get caught up and the settlement's at issue, but it's 
it's the children's future that's going mm. to be put first and I understand that's the opinion of the court as well, yeah. Uh, look, I think that what we're talking about is in terms of child support, but mm. yes, when you look at parenting matters and you approach the court to make decisions about arrangements for your children, the paramount consideration for the court is the best interests of the children. Uh, it mm. really rises and falls, falls there. Mm. Okay, fabulous, all right. Uh, well, that's you know, great information and great knowledge around this subject because, I mean, ultimately, Actually, the other thing that came up for me as we're just talking now is like, is once these things are locked in, it's pretty much stitched up until a situation changes. Is that right? Yeah. Who are you? For what? Oh, it, so it, it, once a, a child support arrangements is made, uh-huh. that's that's set in stone until some part of the situation changes, Shannon. Well, so it depends how you uh, get your child support. So if it's a child support assessment, like I mentioned earlier, through mm. the Department of Human Services, uh, that can change as circumstances change. Uh, but if you enter into a, a binding child support agreement, uh, then that is a different kettle of fish altogether. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's obviously where the independent advice comes exactly. in. And <laughs> sitting down with a family lawyer mm. and or a financial planner and getting it together, yeah? Now, we'll start with you, Helen. How do people get some more Helen Baker? Just go to onyourowntwofeet.com.au. Okay, and Shannon? Oh, you can just go to my website at Dakin Family Law. Okay, fabulous, all right. So this is all part of an ongoing series where we're specifically talking about divorce in terms of financial planning and the legal matters. And we'll see you next time on the East Central Business Show. So just a general chat with Helen Baker, our resident expert financial planner on the East Central Business Show, Helen. Now, uh, where does this passion come from about financial planning? We've just shot your first series. You've talked about you like it. Yeah. Where does that come from? I didn't know to start with. So my background was originally uh, more as a fixer. So I used to go into businesses and fix things and make things happen. So Mm. I think the combination of the finance background, the project management, the fixer, and uh, dealing with people, one, two, three, and here I am. Okay, fabulous. Now we're going to put a disclaimer up on around us at the moment, so it's probably down here somewhere. But you know, it's really important that people understand that whatever we do in these episodes is not specific advice. Yeah. No. So specific advice must be tailored to their personal circumstances. Mm. So we'll just be talking generally mm. about bits and things, and if that interests them and sparks them, they can seek specific advice from there. Okay, so now how do people get the Helen Baker though? So there's a book and there's a website to make contact, yeah? Yeah, so there's a website, there is the book that you can buy, I'm on LinkedIn, um, you find me wandering around Brisbane. Okay. <laughs> Leave me alone if I'm at the groceries, <laughs> no. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, on your own two feet.com.au mm. is uh, the hub of where you'll find everything you need to know and really. It's a book title as well, isn't it? It is. What does that mean? It's all consistent. Okay, fabulous. All right, so that's a a couple of great ways to get your Helen Baker, the resident expert financial planner on the East Central Business Show.